Okay, well, thanks for having us, Kenji. It's great to be back at Smog and hear lots of Scottish accents. I miss them all, so I'm enjoying it. Uh, so I'm Jasmine Hodge and I'm here with Sam Taylor and I'm supporting her in her presentation today that is around competencies, learning plans and cohorts in Moodle and how to track progress across multiple Moodle courses. Okay, so for the purpose of the demonstration, we have a scenario. So the scenario is you've got a graduate, graduate skills cohort and you want to launch a competency framework to all the final year students to get them ready for industry and out in the world of work. So you've got 10 competencies that need to be met, that the students all need to evidence against, and you've got a team of careers advisors that want to monitor each of these competencies and the students progress in these. Okay, so for today, we're going to demonstrate two options. Okay, so there's two options. And option A is to weave each of the competencies into multiple module courses that already exist within their curriculum. A, or option B, you can pull all the competencies into one reflective portfolio module course, and you could create an assignment submission that would match each competency for the student to submit their evidence to meet that competency. Okay, so for either of these two options to work, you need to have a competency framework. You also need a learning plan template. You need to create a dedicated cohort that will hold all the final year graduate students. And you also need to define a new role that you could call graduate skills manager and plus you'll need a couple of new plugins, but Sam will demonstrate all these going through the presentation. Oh, hopefully. I will hand works. over to Sam. <laughs> Lovely, thank you. And just to say, um, I thought I'd share this because uh, somebody we've been working with recently said, I want to launch competencies across my um, institution. And I thought, well, I've never actually touched competencies in Moodle. We've used competencies with other learning platforms, but yeah, I've never seen it in Moodle. And I thought, well, it's you know, a good opportunity to share what we've learned through working with this client you know, back with the Moodle community, because obviously we don't work in university, but we'd like to sort of share back. So if you've already used competencies and stuff and want to tell me how I've done it wrong, please do tell me. But um, I just hopefully um, can share some of the sort of things that we've done to make things smoother. So first of all, what you need to do is set up your competency framework in Moodle. So um, you add your framework, you to give it a title. And then this is the first confusing bit. It's about choosing your scale and your default and proficiency values. OK, so when you set them up, um, the scale, you can use one that's already existing in Moodle or you can create a brand new one. If you're going to do a brand new one that isn't um, part of Moodle, you need to do that first before you set up your framework. When you've set up your scale and your framework, you then choose what the default value is. So this is what um, you, once the competency has been met, what is the default? So it's not when the um, competency is first assigned to a learner, it's what the default is once they've met the competency. So if they've met it, it wouldn't be not competent, it would be competent or competent with support. And then the proficiency value is the level which you think that uh, a learner would be proficient or competent. So if you're using the competent, not competent scale, then you'd use the default and the proficiency value as competent. OK, move on. Uh, so once you've added your um, competencies to the framework, it's then, well, once you've created your framework, you need to add your competencies to it. And there's a number of ways you can do it. You can just add them one by one. Or in this demonstration here, you can see I've added a competency called competent graduate. So if we call that the parent competency, and then I've put the 10 other competencies underneath it as its children. And then here in the competency rule, I've told it that once all the children have been marked as complete, the top competency is also marked as complete. So they're all dependent on each other. We move on. Strange not having control. OK, so you've now created your uh, framework, you've added your competencies. Um, now it's time to deploy them across the uh, across your Moodle. So things to consider. All your competencies must be added to a course first before they can be worked on. So this was my first 
um, issue is how do I get these competencies into the courses because I knew I seen a competency button somewhere didn't know where to start so step one add your competencies to the course and then step two you then add your competencies um, to any activities you need also to consider that your students regardless if you use a learning plan or not they can still see the competencies added to the course okay so bear that in mind if you're adding competencies um, the students can find them and they may ask oh what's this about if they haven't actually been linked to anything so as jazz says we um, had two options that we wanted to present to you there's there could be so many different options or a combination uh, but we thought we'd keep it very simple with two. So option A is weaving these competencies into the curriculum. So this works really well if uh, you've had a curriculum meeting where you've looked at the framework, you've looked across all the modules in the program or units, whatever terminology you use, and you say, well, these two competencies, this works really, really well with this assess task, or these ones here work really, really well with this sort of live brief that we're working on. And that way you can map the competencies across the entire program. Um, when you set it up, it is a case of adding the competencies to the course and then um, with the outcome of doing nothing. So if a competency is met, don't do anything. And then what you do is then assign these competencies to any of the activities the students complete. And if you're using completion tracking, this is where you can set the competency to be deemed as met or complete once the activity is complete. So just to show you an example, so the competencies when you first add them will appear in the left hand navigation. If you're using a boost, a boosty theme, a boost type of theme, this is our um, Cat Awesome theme. But this is where you add them. Um, so you just list them here and you can see um, that uh, where it says upon course completion, I have selected the option do nothing. Thank you, my glamorous assistant. And then here um, for an activity at the bottom, once you've added your competencies to the course, you can then add them to the uh, activity. So here you can see I've added two, so commercial awareness and teamwork. And I've told it that once this activity has been complete, so it's either been ticked by Moodle with their completion tracking or students ticked it, um, the competencies are then deemed complete. And then finally, from a student's point of view, this is what it looks like when they click on the competencies tab. They can see which competencies have been added to the course. And here they can see that this uh, that they've met the competency because they, it has a big green competent uh, button there. And they can see which activity it is that they completed to make it competent. So this is all without a learning plan. So this is really, really good. <laughs> However, um, it's you, you can't get an overview of how all your learners are doing. Okay, so option B, so you pull them into a portfolio course. So this is where um, you use one Moodle course and you list uh, a number of activities for the students to complete. So this works really, really well, uh, but it all depends on how many numbers of learners that you have. Uh, it doesn't involve the teaching staff or lecturers having to add the competencies. It's all managed by the same team um, and it, you know, they'll be responsible for the management of it. So first of all, you need to define how you're going to organise them. So if you've only got, say, 100 learners, 100 students, they could probably manage it in one course. If you've got thousands of learners, so if you're a big university, it may be worth splitting the learners up into their own separate cohorts, depending on a programme and having a course by programme. Also remember um, about the staff as well, so the staff to learner ratio. So if you are a staff member and you're responsible for 100 students and there's 10 competencies, that's, that's a lot of competencies you have to review. So really, really think about how you're going to manage it. And then once you've added, uh, once you've created your course and decide how you're going to do it, you then add the 10 competency, competencies to the course, so all 10 of them, and then you just create a Moodle assignment or an activity per competency. And again, mark it to complete once the activity is complete. So just to give you an idea what it could look like. So here is an example of a, an assignment. Um, so it's a, a mood, um, assignment submission point. And here you could either ask the students to submit a Mahara page, or it could be just text, online text, a document, a number of files. It could be audio, video, whatever you want. Um, and again, it has some structure here. So they have to do a description, reflection, action plan, and evidence based on what it is that they've, they've done so for commercial awareness they have to think about when they use commercial awareness throughout their study or maybe a live brief so this is really really cool because it means the students can reflect and apply their knowledge to um, what they've learned 
And this is uh, the view from the, uh, so the teacher, so anybody with editing rights. Uh, if you haven't seen it before, there's a report called Competency Breakdown Report. And this is where you can go into the report. You can filter through all the learners in your course and you can see how they're doing with regards to the competencies. Again, you know, it's great. You can, you know, get some really good info out there, but it's not an overview. It's a case by case um, having to go in and look for them. OK. And so just quickly, the pros and cons, if you go for the weaved option, you know, it's great because you can put the competencies in context and it adds value to the to the courses so the students can see real world skills and outcomes with actually embedded in the curriculum. However, a con, you know, the teachers are then another thing they have to think of. Oh, we need to add a competency. Which competency is it? Uh, and also the students, unless the activity is designed in a way that um, gets them to reflect and think about how it's been applied. It's just another, oh, I've. I've done this activity. Oh, and I've met a competency. Whoopie do, you know. And then in the combined, so uh, the portfolio approach, you know, the pros is it's standardised, so everyone uh, has the same experience. It offers a really good chance to reflect and evaluate their progress on that competency. However, the cons again, if you've got large numbers, it might be very difficult to administer. But also, you know, will students actually do it? And in my experience, you know, they need to. It needs to be sold to them in a way that makes them want to do it. OK, so you've got your competencies, they're linked to courses. What's next? So this is where the learning plans come in. And so this was another headache trying to get my head around this. So first of all, you need to create a cohort to, um, to make it easy to assign these learning plans. Um, you can add them manually or via CSV. And like I said here, you know, you'll use it to assign your learning plan. You then need to create a specific role. This is what I recommend anyway. A, you know, for these careers advisors in this scenario, they need a, a specific role. And this role is only um, specific to this particular cohort. Um, so uh, I can tell you at the end, if you're interested, where to find uh, the information in the Moodle docs about how to create these custom roles. But it's basically any capability or permission that has anything to do with <laughs> uh, learning plans or competencies and viewing either of them, you just basically add to this role. And then when you go um, into the user settings, you then go to the cohort and you can add um, this particular role, users to this role just for this cohort. And the next slide sort of shows you where that is. And what this basically means is this person, um, when they assigned this specific role against this specific cohort, they can review all the plans for that specific cohort. So just to show you how this works. So you select the name of your careers advisor, you make sure they're given this new custom role and then you pick the learning plan that you are going to assign them to. Oh, sorry, the cohort that you're assigning them to. Okay, so that's that set up. Next, it's the learning plan. And this is actually quite easy, it turned out. You just select the uh, framework you want to add to your template. So when you go to your ad site admin, you'll find it under the competency section, it's learning plan templates. So you create your template, you pull your 10 competencies into it, and then you enroll your graduate skills cohort to it. And what this does, is it basically deploys that learning plan with that list to all the learners that are in that cohort. And as Jasmine shows next, um, so this is what it looks like. So in Moodle, they'll go in and they have um, their, their plan. So this is the template um, when you put it together for them. And on the next slide, it will show you what it looks like to a student, I hope. You go. So the students go into their learning plans, you can see they've got the graduate skills one, and they can see a progress bar of how they're doing. They have a list of all their competencies and what their current rating is. And if they go to the uh, actions, the little edit button, they can actually see if there's any courses linked to that competency. So this just shows you, oh look, find courses. Aha, here we go, let's go to this course and complete this competency. So nearly finished so where's the progress overview so there isn't one out of the box of Moodle um, as I said at the start Jazz and I we work with other uh, VL, open source VLEs and they have learning plans absolutely nailed absolutely wonderful but there are plugins out there that do amazing stuff with the Moodle data and the two that I recommend is this learning plan autocomplete plugin and it basically means that when all 10 competencies in the plan is are complete it actually marks the learning plan as complete because at the moment what happens is the, all the competencies are met but then the learning plan has to be sent to someone for sign off which 
you know, is great, but sometimes you don't need that. You just want it to just automatically done because all the work's being done in meeting the competencies. It doesn't need to go for another review step, especially if you're a careers advisor with 100, 200 learners to look after. And then the next one is this um, learning plan monitoring plugin, which is just amazing. I, I thank the people that created it. Um, if Jasmine goes to the next page, she can show you what it looks like. So here is you pick your template. So here it is. You click apply and then all your learners are then uh, presented to you that you can go through and actually see how they're doing with their competencies in one page. So it pulls it together, regardless of whether you're doing a one course portfolio approach or you've got multiple courses or using um, the uh, competencies. So, and that's it. That's just, um, so that's what I've been working on with a couple of clients, like I said, um, and I you know, just wanted to share it back with you. Hopefully I've shown you something interesting. And if you've deployed learning plans and competencies yourself, I'd love to hear how you got around some of the stumbling blocks like I had to. <laughs>